I am Chastity White Rose, and I am a Full Sail University student. But you wouldn't know it by looking at me. Because to most of the world, I am just an autistic nerd. I look like a creepy 36-year-old man to most people, but I'm actually a transgender woman. And I'm highly autistic. I do computer programming for fun. And I love math and computers. And I love playing Tetris. But what I'm about to tell you is the story of how I enrolled in Full Sail University with the hope of earning a degree and gaining some respect and hopefully getting a good paying job. And it's actually a very interesting story because I've tried many things. I've published books. This is my best book. I've definitely published books. I am obsessed with My Little Pony, and I love that. I have a narwhal that I named Eyelashes. I'm very childlike. I'm very nerdy. I'm very socially awkward, and I look like a homeless bum. But I'm going to teach you not to judge a book by its cover, because although... I don't know how to deal with people very well. I am highly intelligent in certain areas. And what happened, how I started enrolling in Full State University happened in March of 2023. I saw a Facebook ad um, about it. And so, you know, I clicked on it. I put in some information. I don't remember what the ad said anymore, but I remember that less than a week later, I was contacted by some enrollment guide or some, th some kind of person like that from Full Sail University to tell me about the online Full Sail University program. So, you know, I was sort of interested, so we talked for a bit. And he asked me my interests, and I told him. And so he was asking me about perhaps getting into the game development, of course, since I'm interested in programming and video games. But he also mentioned the game business and esports science program. And it was that program that I actually chose and that my degree is in game business and esports science. And the reason I chose that program was precisely because the business skills involved in the video game industry also apply to many other industries and businesses. And I thought being socially awkward and not knowing how to talk um, very well meant that I needed to work on my weaknesses more than I needed to work on my strengths. And so without really knowing what I was getting myself into, I enrolled in Full Sail University. I went through all the steps that my guides uh, told me about. And so I got my tuition paid for with a Stafford loan and, and government grants and the technology assistance. I don't remember all the details and I'm going to have student loans to pay off. But I got involved in Full Sail University and it was an exciting new journey. And that's just the beginning. That's just the very beginning of the story. And I'm going to tell you what happened after that. After I enrolled in Full Sail University and went through the orientation and took the test of all that, my first official class was creative presentation. And it was interesting and I did well in it because it was my very first class and it was about presenting things, learning to make a presentation with PowerPoint, um, preparing a Word document uh, with, with certain information. And I remember it was very interesting. I, I learned about things like body language and how to communicate, which I'm still not the best at. Yet, when I read the instructions and followed them and read the materials, I found that I was able to do really well. I met the requirements. I got perfect grades that month. And I was actually thrilled that 
even though I was nervous about starting this new uh, online schooling thing, wondering if I would survive very long, I did extremely well through my first month. And one of the best parts is getting to choose what topics you do your assignments on. Because there might be, you might have to choose a movie to watch, for example, um, to that you write about in your assignment. But that's the best part is I actually chose the movie When Harry Met Sally as an example of body language because there was a lot of body language in it. And so I remember I did an assignment just about a certain part of that movie and I got 100% great on that. So creative presentation was interesting. It was my very first time learning how to use, you know, Microsoft Word and Microsoft PowerPoint. And even though I hate Microsoft, um, I found that I was able to use brand new software that I'd never used before and still do semi-decent. And I was impressed with what I could do. And that was an easier class than some. And maybe that's why they put it at the beginning of my program. So creative presentation is fun. And I can promise you that if you become a full sales student and you take creative presentation, you will probably enjoy it as much as I did. After I got done with creative presentation, my next class was psychology of play. And it was actually very interesting because we got into the psychology, the reasoning behind why people re do things to relax or play a video game. It's not just about playing video games, but anything that you do to relax, something to de-stress, you know, it has effects on you and diff it, the interesting different things people did. And so we wrote about various things and it was actually a relatively easy class. And I can't remember very much about the assignments that I did specifically during that time. But one thing I did remember very clearly during that time is that I organized all of my files on my computer by their date, by the week of which class they were. And it was interesting because I got to study myself, I guess, what it was that I enjoyed so much about Tetris. And I definitely did assignments um, on the game of Tetris in that class, just as I have done in many of my classes because it's such an important part of how I came to get really deep into programming and the way my autistic mind fits geometric objects together. So psychology of play is, doesn't even feel like it's a class. It feels more like therapy is what it feels like because the fun of interacting with other students during the lectures and hearing their perspectives of what relaxes them and what play looks like for them. I found it very interesting. It was m most enjoyable. That was probably one of the easiest, if not the easiest class that I had uh, with my Full Sail University program so far. After Psychology of Play, my next class was Introduction to the Video Game Industry. And I learned a lot about the history of video games. We're talking, you know, Space Invaders, Pong, like the very earliest technology, um, the very first video games and Pac-Man. And unfortunately, there wasn't very much mention of Tetris, which I thought was a shame. And I definitely, had to mention Tetris when it came to video game his, his, his history because it's just such a, a big part of what started puzzle games. But I remember there was this one discussion post where we discussed the concept of loot boxes and how the players felt about it, the pros and cons of it. And I thought it was interesting because we all got to research a controversial uh, element of video games and then discuss with each other the pros and cons of it. 
And we had to research um, sides for and against the concept. And for those of you who don't know about loot boxes, loot boxes are like the idea where you can buy randomly generated items in a video game, usually an MMORPG or some similar games, or maybe even a, a different genre of game, but it's randomly generated. So people with more money to spend, they have a they have a greater chance to randomly get good stuff that people with less money um, don't have access to. So because of that, some have criticized it as a pay to win element that rewards the rich and punishes the poor. And so even though I'm personally against it, I also was able to think about it from the side of how it makes money for the video game uh, developers to do that. So it was video game history and information about how the video game industry functions, but there was a little bit of ethics tied into that. And ethics is definitely one of my biggest favorite things to talk about and how we need to make ethical decisions even when creating or playing video games became clear to me while doing that class. And I feel like that's my biggest takeaway. After completing Introduction to the Video Game Industry, my next class was Introduction to Esports Production. And the thing about that class that was so interesting is that, first of all, I was very bad at it. I was very bad at it because I know nothing about esports. And I know nothing about regular physical sports either. It's ironic that I, as such a hardcore gamer, don't care about esports and I don't care about competition. I feel like competition is evil um, in a sense. I can understand that competition is can be fun, but I also feel like um, esports is not really where my interest lies. And I learned one thing from that class. I should not be an esports producer. Perhaps I could play in an esports tournament, but I wouldn't want to be a producer because I learned how much planning and preparation really goes into it. When you um, have to be um, the planner of an event, you have to consider everything. You have to consider the cost of renting the facility and making sure the equipment is there and the internet connection, making sure that there are rules that are followed, that you have security should acts of violence happen and people try to kill each other who attend your event. You have to think of all the legal and financial implications of it. It's definitely not something I want to do. And I guess one of the great things about doing um, any type of uh, college program is you really learn what it is you want to do and what it is you don't want to do. You learn what you're good at and also what you're bad at. And I swear I got the worst grades in that class than I got in any others. And for a moment there, I almost regretted that I had even started full sale because I thought, what did I get myself into? It was also during that time that I lost my job at Hy-Vee too. So I was at a really low place in my life, but nonetheless, that sad a time did pass. Um, but I will say this, I really did respect my professor. He's a cool dude. Um, but I told him <laughs> he was doing the Lord, Lord's work, doing the class that he did because some people should not be uh, esports producers. Otherwise, we may end up with the next Gaming Paradise event. Look up Gaming Paradise uh, esports event and you will find the worst event ever in history. I had to watch a video on that and I am traumatized for life by that. <laughs> After introduction to esports production, I had what was the most stressful and horrific experience in a class 
ever since I started my full sale uh, university program up to this point. And what made it difficult was that at the time I was starting a job in a nursing home as an activities assistant. Unfortunately, um, I did not have the time to dedicate to things that I wanted to. And I also ended up losing that job due to the administrator not liking me for being transgender. And that's a whole nother story right there, but there's some actual pretty solid evidence that that was what happened. So, but what made that class so difficult was that it, we had to do team assignments. It was group assignments. It was introduction to marketing. And so it was during this time that I actually got a MacBook Pro from Full Sail University as part of my program. And it was actually a really cool machine. I learned how to use it. I learned how to get on Zoom meetings with the MacBook. I got, you know, I got to be part of a team and I thought, well, maybe we can make this work. Even though I really hate people, um, I thought I had a good team and it worked well for a while because we delegated. We had, um, we had different people work on different things and then we would have Zoom meetings and we would work on things together and discuss things. But unfortunately, what happened was there was one of our team members who was not a team player and decided to change um, other people's work. If he decided that the part that I did wasn't good enough or that the other people on our team, uh, if he decided what they did, did wasn't good enough, he would change it. So what would happen is that he would submit something different than what the rest of us submitted. And because the professor would take off points for that and lower the grade if people submitted different things, his actions made us all get much worse grades than we would have otherwise. And I specifically remember being very angry myself because obviously um, I was having job trouble at the time and doing well at school was only one of the few things I had to possibly feel good about. And he took that away from me. So I'm still angry at him. And so was, so were my other teammates at the time too. Nonetheless, there was one silver lining to um, that class. And it was that there were these marketing uh, simulations. There was, it was basically like a video game that we got to play where we had to, we had to design a backpack for a target audience. And we had to set the price and, and market it in such a way, all within a simulated little game. And doing the mini sims and the final simulation, that was a solo endeavor. That was something that we got to do by ourselves, separate from our team assignments we had to submit together. And it was actually a lot of fun. I genuinely enjoyed that part of it. I also enjoyed learning how to use that MacBook and what it was capable of because this is my very first time using um, an Apple-based device like that. So the marketing uh, class turned out to be very hard due to the timing of my life and having a very rude and inconsiderate teammate, but it wasn't all bad. And I did learn a lot about marketing. I really feel like I did learn something from that class that will probably benefit me in the future. After introduction to marketing, my next class was storytelling for marketing. And the focus of this class was different because it was about storytelling used in marketing. So when somebody is trying to sell a product or trying to advertise it, if they tell a story that people relate to, that's going to catch people's attention. It was during this time that I learned about types of stories. 
I learned about the popular story framework of the hero's journey. I learned about character archetypes. I learned about all kinds of psychological things. And I don't really consider myself much of a storyteller. I'm not somebody who really understands stories very well. I'm very much a this happened and this happened and this happened. I don't really get concepts very well. But upon reading the material and watching the example videos, I started realizing that the hero's journey was embedded in just about every single video game or every book or movie that ever existed. And when I learned why that was, I found out there was a man named Joseph Campbell who wrote about it. And apparently what he did was analyze all the different stories that have been told in all kinds of media and found certain elements that are usually present, the 12 steps of the hero's journey that are usually present. And if you learn about the hero's journey, you'll find that it's in almost everything. Every story you've ever heard, there, there's always a hero, a main character, and there's a mentor, so, some guide or teacher that, you know, it helps them along and start some journey. And there's always some big conflict, whether it's a, whether it's a personal conflict or whether it's some villain trying to take over the world or something like that. There's always various characters and events in the hero's journey and in most stories. And it actually inspired me to look at my own story much more closely than I had before. And I had to do, you know, assignments on the hero's journey. And I actually used my own book as an example. And I started realizing that even though when I wrote this book, I was telling about a series of dreams, I didn't realize that... I was the hero in the story, the main character. Not that I'm heroic, but I was the main character. But then the mentor was Honesty the Unicorn. And I was just thinking about how ironic it is that I didn't know about the hero's journey. And yet, throughout my series of books, there it is staring me in the face. And I had to do a big assignment on it. And I made a video about it, and I just was blown away at how important storytelling is. But the thing is, even if you're not a storyteller, if you're telling a story of something that happened, especially if that story is real, there are certain things that you're going to find. And analyzing any story deeper is something that I feel I learned to do from taking the storytelling and marketing class. And even if I never learned to use this to sell my books or any video games I make, I feel like there's a lot of personal benefit to understanding the depth of stories and recognizing those character archetypes. My current class after I completed Storytelling for Marketing is video sharing platforms. And in this class, we're learning about the different platforms on which people can share videos and the importance of hashtags and keywords and titles and descriptions and video image uh, dimensions and ratios and the difference between long and short form. There's so much that goes into creating videos. There's the technical details about the pixels. There's the file formats. But there's also, well, what, how, how does a video catch or lose a person's interest? You know, storytelling is a big part of making videos. You know, there's the, there's the written word and then there's the, the spoken word, but then there's video which combines audio and visual elements and 
as a person who has had a YouTube channel and a TikTok and an Instagram and a Facebook and who knows what else that I created and forgot about, I was producing a lot of videos, mostly silly stuff or showing my skills in Tetris, obviously. But I guess I never really thought about all the fine details that go into making videos. And I still don't really know if I am a good video content creator, but that's kind of what the purpose of the class is. I'm gonna learn more in this and throughout my full sale program about, you know, all the different ways that you can market an idea or a product. And I care about marketing ideas even more than products which are actually sold. And I feel like maybe I did the right thing joining Full Sail University, but at the same time, it's hard to keep up. I do have some good news. I got a job with Walmart overnight stocking. And I like it, but I also find that I'm so busy, I don't have time to dedicate to my schoolwork as much as I would like. Nonetheless, I keep at it and I keep learning things. And I'm hoping that I can complete full sale and get my degree. And even if I'm never able to get a job because of having a degree, something I learned in my program will probably pay off in the future and help me with something. That is my hope. And that is also my hope for you if you decide to become a, an online college student with Full Sail University or any other college or school that may be of interest to you to advance you in your career and your life in general. And also, please let me know if anything that I have shared has been helpful to you in your own journey. I have the messiest room in the world and most of the stuff in here isn't even my stuff. But this is where the magic happens. This is the computer where I do my online schooling. This is a Minis Forum mini PC. That is the PC right there. I have a monitor and I have a keyboard hooked up. Here's here's my here's my friend eyelashes, the narwhal. And it's this um is amazing because this is a very non-standard computer. I'm into very interesting computers. And so this is the computer I do my online schooling on, and it works well for me. This is my most advanced computer. I also have a Pinebook Pro over here that I use sometimes for some things, and it's kind of a very odd computer, similar to the Raspberry Pi. But I thought people might like to see how I, the computer that I use, and I use Ubuntu Linux, and here you can see me as I prepare my um, my my post for one of my assignments. This is LibreOffice Writer, which is a free open source alternative to Microsoft Word. It's not exactly identical, but it, it works very well. Plus, there is the online interface of Microsoft Word that full sales students have access to. So I thought it just might be kind of cool to show um, the PC I actually use and the odd setup that I have. I want to give potential full sale students a general overview of what it actually looks like when someone's using a computer to do some online schooling with full sale. Because um, this is kind of information that might may be helpful to people, especially Linux users like me. This is my Linux de desktop. I'm using Ubuntu Linux with the XFCE desktop environment, and I use only free and open source software. And here is my Firefox web browser. I can view my student email here. I can view... Um, my Microsoft 365 account, which is part of my 
as part of my tuition with Full Sail, I have access to Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, uh, Microsoft OneDrive. I have access to all that sort of things. Um, and assignments are actually submitted on online.fullsale.edu. Um, and so this page shows the courses I've taken so far. I've completed all of these these classes, for example. And so this is just a general idea of what it looks like. This, is, this was all done in April, I believe. And so for each thing, this was, this was actually a very good month because I got 100% on all of my assignments. So if you go to any section, uh, for example, each section will have instructions for things you have to do so it has it has instructions what your objective is what your instructions are videos to watch about it and then you follow the directions you submit your files and and this one i remember specifically this was an assignment where i had to give a speech on one of the full sale graduates um, and I chose Karis Baker, the artist. And so this was a very good month, but that's just a general idea of what you, you do. And so everything, it, this is online schooling. That's what's so cool about, um, doing online school as opposed to in-person on-campus school is everything is computerized everything is files you have a student email you have access to the microsoft products even if you're working under linux you can still access everything you need from a web browser you have a website to turn in your assignments you can you can send messages to your instructors to other students it's very well and so that's just a very basic interface and i hope this information will be helpful to students who they you know they don't want to attend you know an online uh, I mean they don't want to attend a, a an on-campus school that wouldn't fit in with their lifestyle but they very much want to do schooling and are considering online schooling and I want people to know that even if they have a non-standard computer system that they can still do classes with Full Sail University and I've proven it so that is one thing that I really wanted to show and I hope that information is helpful to potential full sale students I want to thank everyone for watching my journey of full sale university so far and I also want to show you what it is that I do when I'm not doing online school or working at Walmart I use Ubuntu Linux because it's very convenient for me as a computer programmer. Um, here's my file browser. On the side here are all my programming projects. Well, not all of them. There's a lot. But the one that I'm most proud of so far is this one. Using SDL, I created a Tetris game. And I'm going to show you how it's compiled and run. I right-click with my mouse open terminal here and I have a make file so if I do cat make file you see my make file there with the commands that compile and run so if I type make it will run the new C compiler compiles and runs did you see how fast that was and here is my game playing itself because my Tetris game has a special feature where it saves the key presses so they can be played back at a later time to make impressive speedrun videos. I basically designed my, tool, my own tool-assisted speedrunning Tetris game. That's what Chase Triss is. And I made it a little bit fancy with the color-changing text on the title. I hope everyone has enjoyed watching um, my video. And please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.